If you wonder what the pressure altitude is, why it's so important in aircraft performance and how can you calculate the pressure altitude, this is the right video for you. Let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriele from PilotClimb.com. I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737 and if you're new to the channel, my goal is to help you out to become a better pilot or make your head around the aviation. So consider subscribing so you will not miss the next videos. Alright, before starting this training video for today, what I want to make sure is that you leave me in the comments below any questions you may have throughout the video. If I haven't uh, made any topic clear or any concept clear, just let me know in the comments below and then I will help you out. For me, it's extremely important that you get 100% out of this uh, video, all right? So, let's jump into the topic. The pressure altitude, by definition, is the height of your aircraft above the standard isobar, the 1013.25 hectopascal or 29.92 inches of mercury, all right? This is also called QNE. I made a separate video where I explain what the QNE is, the QNH, the QFE, altitude and so on. I link the video in the description below, please go there and watch it before continuing because it's extremely important you actually know all these things. Alright, so as we said, this is the definition, okay, the 8 above the 1013. But why it is so important for us to know that? It is so important because the performances of the aircraft are based on the 1013 hectopascal. So, we need to know the pressure altitude that we are in every day because if you are a lower pressure, that means sea level, that means that you have a lower pressure around your aircraft compared to the standard one. And if you have a lower pressure compared to the standard one that we use as a reference, your aircraft will have a, a worse performance, okay? So you might need a longer run for takeoff. So you really need to know not your actual altitude, not your actual elevation, but your, the pressure that is around the aircraft. This is so important to understand that the aircraft doesn't care about the physical elevation of, uh, of the runway but it only cares about how much pressure there is around him okay because the aircraft works with the pressure of the air it doesn't work with the physical elevation for he doesn't care the aircraft doesn't know if it's 1000 feet physical above the elevation 500 feet physical he only knows it cares about how much pressure has got around him all right so in standard atmosphere the pressure that means 11 is 1013 hectopascal and for every 27 feet of difference in altitude this pressure decreases by 1 hectopascal so if at mean sea level we have 1013, 27 feet above the mean sea level we're gonna have the 1012 hectopascal. Another 27 feet above that we're gonna have the 1011 hectopascal and so on, all right? So if you have a lower pressure, what will happen is that the aircraft will think that is actually at an higher altitude compared to the standard, to the, sorry, to the physical one because it only thinks about the pressure. Let's jump into the whiteboard and then I'm gonna draw some aircraft, some airports to make this concept clear. All right, so looking at the whiteboard, I'm gonna draw two airports, okay, and two different scenarios, okay, the first one we're gonna call it scenario A and scenario B. In order to make the concept clear, I'm gonna write the mean, the mean sea level, okay, some terrain there, okay, and then I'm gonna write down the runway, okay, and an aircraft. All right, fantastic. Sorry guys for the drawing again. It's not perfect, but it's really the best I can do. If the airport elevation is 1000 feet, okay, physical, okay, that doesn't change, okay. If the airport elevation is 1000 feet and the pressure, the mean sea level is the standard 1013.25 hectopascal, this means that this aircraft has got a pressure altitude of 1000 feet because as we said before the pressure altitude is the 8 above the 1013.25 okay and it's standard in the standard atmosphere and i made a separate video about the standard atmosphere go there and watch and i will make the link in the description below in the standard atmosphere the QNH is actually the 1013.25 but as we know the pressure change every day so we, it's very rare that we actually have got the QNH of 1013.25 if you want to make uh, an exercise go on google now 
uh, and type QNH and then your area, your airport, the, the airport is close to you, and you will see that the QNH at the airport is not 1013.25. And if it is, it's very rare. So, and you can see that if that is 1013, another airport close to it, it doesn't have the 1013. So the pressure around the aircraft also change constantly. Okay, so let me draw now the, uh, the, ex the example B, all right, where instead of having a QNH, a pressure admissive level of 1013.25, hectopascal in this case we have a lower pressure so the QNH will be 1000 hectopascal okay but the other physical situation so the physical elevation will stay the same so I'm gonna draw here the runway all right and the aircraft okay so what will happen is that since it is for you important to know the pressure altitude, not the altitude, the physical altitude, because whenever you are taking off, you need to know how much takeoff weight you can carry for the takeoff, because if you have a lower pressure, okay, if you have a lower pressure, what will happen is that the aircraft will need a longer takeoff run in order for takeoff, okay, if you have a higher pressure, the performances of the aircraft will be better and you will, the, the engines will be, will have more power, the wings will create more lift and you will be able to take off in a shorter distance. So for that reason, it's important you know that your pressure altitude. So in the example B, all right, we've got 1000 hectopascal of the QNH. So let's see which pressure altitude we've got around this, air, this airplane okay so how do we calculate the pressure altitude as we said before in a standard atmosphere for every 27 feet of altitude variation we have a one hectopascal of pressure variation as we did as we made this the example before if you're on mean sea level you go 1000 feet 27 feet above the mean sea level you've got one hectopascal less so if your QNH in, in the example B is 1000 27 feet above the mean sea level okay if this is 27 feet okay the pressure in here is gonna be 9 -er, 9 -er, 9 -er hectopascal another 27 feet above this is gonna be 9 -er, 9 -er 8 and so on okay so since this is the pressure variation according to the standard atmosphere what we've got here each 27 feet we've got one hectopascal since the elevation, the 8 from the mean sea level to the airplane is 1000 feet, we can actually calculate what's the pressure around the airplane. How do we do that? Okay, so we take the 1000 feet, okay, and we divide it by 27. Because dividing the 27 feet, we will know how many hectopascal of difference we've got from the mean sea level to the airport. So I take a calculation, a calculator in here, 1000 divided by 27, it gives me 37.03, let's call it 37, okay, 37 hectopascal. So the pressure difference that is, there is between the mean sea level and the aircraft is actually 37 hectopascal. Now, in order to know the pressure that is around the airplane, we need to subtract the, uh, the pressure difference to the QNH. So if the QNH was 1000 hectopascal, all right, so minus 37, which was the difference, the pressure difference that we calculate in that 1000 feet, is gonna give us uh, the result which should be uh, 37, which should be 97, nine, nine, here we go, 963, nine, here we go. So we've got 963 hectopascal okay so now that we know that around the aircraft we've got 163 hectopascal we can actually calculate the pressure altitude how can we do that let's dive into it in order to calculate the pressure altitude we need to know the difference in pressure that there is between the 1013 hectopascal and the 963 that difference of pressure if we know the different pressure and then we multiply this for 27 will give us the difference in 8, okay? And that difference in 8 is actually the uh, pressure altitude. So let's dive into it. What we have to do is take the 1013, subtract the 963, that is the pressure around the airplane, 1013 minus 963, and that gives us 50 hectopascal, okay? This is the difference pressure between the standard 1013 and the pressure around your aircraft, okay? So then we take this 50 hectopascal and we multiply by 27 because we know that for each hectopascal there are 27 feet of altitude uh, difference, okay? So 50 multiplied by 27 is gonna give us 
1350 feet all right so the aircraft b so this aircraft here actually behave like if it would have been in a standard atmosphere but at 1350 because this is the altitude that the aircraft is actually feeling okay so we can say that the pressure altitude is the, the altitude that the aircraft is feeling not the real are, uh, not the real altitude okay so now my question is what will happen to your aircraft if you increase your altitude your performance will be a lot worse okay so your performance will worsen so you will need more runway or you can take off with a lower takeoff weight so that is extremely important why uh, this is the reason why you need to calculate the pressure altitude so in real life what we do every time before the takeoff we fill up a, a table where we put the temperature and other calculations but the, one of the most important data that we put in here is the q and h so the software we actually perform all the calculations and will tell us okay because today there is a low pressure for example like in the case we just made because today there is a low pressure you can take off with less weight if you are restricted the run is short okay let's say the run is short already you, there is a low pressure we put the QA in there and the q and in the software will tell us okay you need to reduce your takeoff weight otherwise the run is not otherwise you're gonna do an overrun okay if you have a super long runway that's not a big deal because if you're not restricted on the runway then even with low pressure you still have enough runway so you can still take off with the same weight but whenever you are restricted on the runway you need uh, the, the pressure altitude the difference in pressure can actually make you to lower your takeoff weight okay so as you can see the pressure altitude, as we said the aircraft doesn't really care about the physical elevation or the physical altitude of the aircraft it only cares about the pressure so once you know the pressure that is around the aircraft and once you know your reference in this case the q &H, you can actually calculate the pressure altitude and you can calculate what is the aircraft experiencing the pressure around the airplane okay because in the example B that we made, even though the aircraft was physically at 1,000 feet, the aircraft was feeling that it was at 1,350 feet. So in the example B, the performances of the aircraft would have been worse. Okay, so you wouldn't need a longer takeoff run. So I hope you liked the video and you took something out of it. Again, if you have any questions, just remember to leave a comment below and then I will help you out. Also, consider subscribing to the channel. I'm gonna make a lot of these uh, type of videos where I'm gonna help you out to understand more the aviation world. So consider subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the next video also you can go to paloclimb.com where you can subscribe for free paloclimb training content and i'll see you in the next one